Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Louise. Morning, Alison. Lovely. I look forward to seeing it. Morning Jan, morning Janice, morning Trish, morning Amanda. Morning Sarah. Morning Kevin, morning Sue. Morning Miriam. Um, same colours for watercolours, only without the white. So you want cadmium red, cadmium yellow, ultramarine, Payne's grey. You could probably do it with that. I didn't see your comment. Morning, Joy. Ah, the music feel is um it's just some random Yes, black no black's fine, um Amanda. Morning Sandra. Um black is perfect. I'll be using black. Um that that's that's good. Um the music is just random, um, I call it elevator music, it's just royalty free music so Facebook won't shut the live feed down because um, it has special sensors. Good, I'm glad you're looking forward to it Susan. Good morning in my left ear, how are we? What are you panicking about? 
What have you got? What 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 do you need? What have you got? Yeah. Okay. What? Okay, so what what shade of yellow is it? Is it more lemon or is it more sunflower? Have you got a yellow ochre? That's fine. Um, and in terms of red, have you got vermilion? Brilliant red, bright red. Um, you want the brilliant red. So in terms of uh, yeah, in terms of brushes, um, Sue, you've just asked. I'm using a couple of flats, a small uh, like what you can see here, a couple of flat brushes, um, a round brush and some thin brushes. Morning, Steph. Morning, Carol. I'm still here. Yeah, and just to go through the colours, I'm using acrylics this morning. So I have white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, ultramarine and black. If you're working in oils, you can use the same colours. If you're working in watercolours, use the same colours without the white. If you're working in gouache, save, use the same colours. Or if you're working with watercolours with white gouache, same colours plus white gouache. Um, if you don't... No, not a problem. Whatever paper you're working on, if it's acrylics, is fine. Um, I'm using a canvas paper, but it's just a bit easier for me to, to work with. Um, if you haven't got cadmium yellow, um, uh, any orange-based yellow will work. And the same with if you haven't got cadmium red, any orange-based red will work. Morning, Claire. Morning, Gabriella. Morning, V. Okay. As usual, I'll wait a few minutes, it's only three minutes into, and we've got 32 people joining us. Welcome, how wonderful to see you all. I won't break into my Mr. Tumble song of hello, hello, how are you? Hello, hello, it's great to see you. Um, obviously, this is a free online class that we're running. Uh, last Saturday's class was absolutely amazing. Um, having so many people joining us from all over the world. Roughly, where are you all from this morning? Are you all UK or have we got anybody outside the UK joining us? It'd be interesting to see. If you did, no pressure. If you did, obviously, this is our business. And while we're in um, lockdown, we're trying to provide as much entertainment for everybody and keep you all creative as much as possible. We're keeping our podcasts going. Obviously, we've got our normal online classes uh, which are just five pounds per session uh, access through Facebook groups. You're all on Facebook, so you can all join us if you're watching here today. Um, and obviously the free classes are free. Um, Northampton, Banbury, good, okay. The wilds of Banbury and Northampton. Um, but if you did want to uh, bung me a quid or something to... Uh, show appreciation for these free classes if you go to paypal.me forward slash the archery art shop you can you can you can throw a tip in my in my hat um i know we all feel a bit like from another planet at the moment sue it's certainly yes we've got white Charlbury. It always sounds very nice, Charlbury. I've driven through Charlbury. I think it's not. It is lovely, actually. 
Okay. I'll wait a, another minute or so, so you can all get settled, prepared, settle in your chair a little bit, and then we can start having a bit of fun. The dining room, excellent. I'm also in the dining room. We're neighbours. Yeah, it looked very nice, Miriam. It looked lovely. I've got somebody on Discord. Staffordshire, lovely. I like Staffordshire. Um, well, my old haunts, really. I used to go to Hanley a lot, actually, in Stoke. Um, yeah, it is. It's lovely up there. I've got my... Um, yeah, well, <laughs> tops off tubes is the thing, isn't it? Um that's why I'm giving you a few minutes to get yourself settled in. Hi, Sue. Good morning. Um, hi, Trish. Dunstew drove through that a couple of weeks ago. Absolutely beautiful there. And America, we've got folks in. And now, whereabouts in America are you, Kevin? I've forgotten where you've where you've moved to. Morning, V. Morning, Grace. Yeah, my, my um, great-grandmother lived in, in Hanley and she used to paint um, pottery um, for one of the big potteries. I think she wasn't, like, doing all the amazing stuff. I think she was probably infilling printed outlines. But nevertheless, that's my link to, to Stoke and Staffordshire. I have a few friends that live in... Um, oh, Maryland Cookies, yes. Well, you are back there. Um... So it's, it's really lovely. The land of merriment. Yes. <laughs> Morning, Anne. How are you? Now, you're Cheshire-based, aren't you, now? Lovely to hear from you. Lovely to see you virtually. It is lovely to have you all joining us. So, round about ten past, I'll kick off properly and make sure that... Um, you're all settled in. I, I don't want anyone to, to feel they're lagging behind. We're supposed to be doing this to ease your stresses, not creating more. And I, I don't have a printer at home, so um, all of these more spontaneous classes I'm having to use. Morning, Norma. All of these um, classes I'm having to use an, an old tablet that um, I normally watch Netflix on um, just so I can see the image. And so you can see the image, really, um, for those of you that may not have it printed or what have you. But I know from our online classes. So basically, the way I'm going to teach you, if you didn't join me last Saturday um, morning... The way I teach you will be exactly the same way as our online classes are taught. You'll be uh, guided through step by step. Um, the online classes are also an exact replica of what you get in our real life classroom um, in our shop when we're allowed to open. Um, Chester, I love Chester. I love the two tier shops, you know, where you've got the ground level, then you've got the steps over the balcony and you've got those um, lovely shops there. Absolutely beautiful, Chester. Um, haven't been for a long time, but I do like it. Um, so yeah, it's all step by step tuition, all fairly relaxed. I do I do push your skill limits, so I'm 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 not shy about that. I think you know I've got a podcast coming up soon that we release on Fridays that talks about when you do work at home, you only ever tend to paint the things that you know you can do because it makes you feel better, but you don't actually learn anything from it. So it's good to take you out of your boundaries. Otherwise, there's no point in doing the lesson if you can already do it well. Um, so it's good to... What is it they say? Oh, no, West Street's beautiful, um, Sue. It's it's gorgeous down there. Um, I, I, I believe it's really nice and sunny this time of day. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, yeah, step-by-step -step tuition. And uh, we guide you through... And I do push you out your comfort zone. Ships in harbours are safe, but that is not what they're built for. So you've got to push the boat out today. Um, although this is a fairly simple exercise, the most difficult bit. From Crick, lovely. Thank you. Aston Lee Walls, wonderful. Welcome, welcome. We've got all counties covered. Do we need to actually stick the, uh, 
Morning, Phil. Um, yeah, I would, I would stick it down. Mine's stapled down. Um, you could tape it down because we could get a bit vigorous with the sky. The, the sky is the trickiest bit for blends, I will be honest. For those of you that are into acrylics, you know that the blending is the harder part. If you're doing this in watercolours, you're all right. Um, because you can just do a nice wet in wet sky. Um, wet in wet doesn't work in the same way, depending on the paper. If you're doing it in acrylics, you could. Um, watercolour paper, but I'm using canvas paper, so I can't. The canvas paper is Pebio's Pop Art Canvas, and um, it is it is actual canvas, but um, primed and in a pad. You get 20 sheets for about £12 in A4, which is wonderful. Good, thank you, V. I'm glad you lo love the classes, um, both online and real life face to face classes. Um, it makes a difference, I think, because you've you've got to take yourself out of your comfort zone. We've got forty two people joining us. Welcome, welcome. How lovely to have you with us today. Of course, you don't have to paint along. You can watch, or you can watch back later. We'll paint along later. This will stay on our uh, shop uh, videos section for ever. For as long as Facebook exists, we'll still be doing this. So, um, you know, do enjoy yourself. I've got my little 2B pencil and I want to draw a wonky line. It is supposed to be wonky. Oh, it wasn't going to be that wonky. But, you know, I'm going to put another one there, so that's fine. Blimey, I can't even draw a line this morning. There's no hope for me, is there? Let me just tilt the camera so you can make sure you've definitely got the edge of the board. There we go. Then we've got a bit of a bit of a mountainy thing behind. Ooh there now i don't do too much drawing with acrylics because you end up painting over it anyway another bit of trees there right that's all i'm going to draw that's it that the mountain that there's a little there's another layer of land just in the distance but you don't have to have it morning carry on in what you well, don't, don't put it in then it's fine or you can just follow me so draw it then right right so we've got some nice um toads to mix in and we'll be using the flat brush to start with so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to give my fat fat flat brush a bit of a a wet just to make it um, more, oh, banging the camera around this morning, my word, um, receptible, receptive to the paint and help the paint move along. Now, I don't paint with acrylic sloppy. I'm actually quite tight with um, with my acrylic paints. So um, I, I load my brush well and then I eke it out as much as I can. Now, it's not too hot today, which is wonderful. Um, so it means we've got a bit more of a chance of working with this. So I'm going to scoop up a dollop of white and you can see hopefully the way the light from my window is hitting the paint that it's quite thick but what I'm going to do is move it across the paper. Big dollop. We're always quite stingy but with this we want this to tint the sky so we're going to move it across. Just make a brew. I don't blame you. I've got a cup of coffee to side of me. Um, I don't normally drink coffee, but I need it today. You're going to need it. If you're working on watercolour paper, you'll need it a bit thicker. If you're using watercolours, just use water instead of white for this. Because you're going to do a wet in wet sky. So the white acrylic paint helps to tone the colours down. Um, in the same way as um, water helps to um, make the colours blend. So what I'm doing is we've got to work quickly. 
And I don't apologise because we... The whole lot white. If it feels sticky, dip your brush in water. But I've now got to go in with some cadmium yellow. I've not cleaned my brush. This is a quick, fast sky. It's got to be quick because otherwise your acrylic will dry. Once your acrylic dries, you've lost your painting. So you have to work quickly. Don't even think about it. Just do exactly as I'm doing and you'll be fine. Yeah, you really want to scoop it up, but if you don't clean your brush, um, you'll be all right. So we've got a stronger yellow on the left, uh, oh, sorry, the right hand side. I always do this to you, don't I? I can never get the left and the right the right way around. Um, stronger bit of yellow. Like that. Maybe I'll be a little bit more yellow. I don't know. We are, we will. Because we're going to stick the sun in later. Now, if you're doing this in watercolours, you can do it exactly the same way. Um, with watercolours, you've got the added bonus. If you want to use a, a two pence piece wrapped in a kitchen roll, you can dab out the circle of your sun. Um, obviously, in acrylics, we're going to do it in a slightly different way. So I'm just brushing my sky very lightly from the edge across so I don't get brush marks because I like my skies to look quite soft right now I am cleaning my brush because I don't want anything to dry because I'll, I'll get hard edges and it's really hard to blend in acrylics um, when it's dry um, it takes a longer time so I'm going to mix some cadmium red and a bit of ultramarine maybe a bit more blue in there I don't want it to go green you see so I'm going to put this across the, the edge and blend from left to right don't be stingy I've lost my picture. There we go. Skies always have to be quick, otherwise you start losing the blendability. Still not cleaning my brush. If it feels sticky, dip the tip of your bristles in a bit of water. If it's dark, shove your brush in a bit of white. And if you go a little bit darker around the very far right edge, that's actually quite nice. Yeah, cadmium reds. If you, well, any sort of bright red is usually quite strong. Um, if you're using cadmium red, I call it, and um, a few of my other uh, uh, watercolour students can vouch for this as well, I call it a hungry colour because it tends to eat up all of the colours in the palette if you're not careful. Okay. So if uh, dip your brush in white, uh, dip your brush in water and white. Um, the white is the only way round everything with acrylics. Um, it's a crucial colour, uh, similarly to watercolour uh, to oils. Um, you really need the strength of white um, to help tone the colours down and to help the colours blend together more. Now, it is a messy, it is a messy lesson, acrylics. Um, watercolours are quite nice and self-contained, but acrylics get everywhere. That, yeah, but it, 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 it's a dark purple until you add white to it, and then a dark purple becomes a, a light purple. 
you 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 need buckets of white but white white is the is the big thing in oils and acrylics i mean people come to buy you can buy oil paints and acrylic paints in 37 mil tubes and then most people buy the the really large tubes ah oh, yes a casper david friedrich absolutely v i know you love him as well as me a wonderful um uh german landscape painter um and you know what v it actually uh morning deb it is the whole painting is a bit like that like the abbey in the oak woods or that he did one with a fir tree in the snow didn't he um absolutely stone tape so um if you do get chance to google later google casper david friedrich or friedrich and um see his beautiful atmospheric landscapes absolutely absolutely stunning he worked in oils um centuries ago absolutely beautiful um there are two of these um morning bernadette uh two of these lovely uh landscape painters that inspired me other than sort of like the english ones like constable but you've got um jacob van roysdale and casper david friedrich and they are absolutely stunning landscape painters in oils and masters at their craft and they do the most beautiful dutch masters um not german um they do it beautiful beautiful scene so we just need that to dry um no it doesn't matter if it's more red than purple sue um it's just slightly different it's your world well it, you know if you've not done acrylics before it is very difficult to work with i i did say how difficult the blends are in acrylics so it's it is all about speed um unless you're painting really thickly and then you can paint in a more impressionist style where you don't need the same level of blend Well, it's easy to panic um, when you when you start, especially if you haven't done it before. But as I will always say, is oil. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's lovely, Sue. Susan, it's um, exactly the same technique with oils as it is in acrylics. Um, I always say, even if at this point in any painting, whether it's watercolors or oils or acrylics or pastels or whatever and you think it's going badly, forget it, carry on, push through and trust the process. Because, you know, we're only working on one part, one element of the whole landscape. Um, so be patient and trust that it may turn out. I mean, if it doesn't turn out all right, what, what have you lost at the end of the day? No one can go anywhere. No one can do anything. Um, and it's only a piece of paper and a tiny bit of paint and an hour. Um, if you're working in watercolours, you can lift out the sun. In acrylics, we're going to do something slightly different. There is more leeway with the blends in oils, Kevin. You're correct. You can. There's more subtlety in oils. Um, it, it does make a huge difference in terms of drying time, obviously. that's. I think that's the downside of oils is they can take months to dry if you're painting quite thickly or at least three weeks even if you're painting this thinly however it works so much nicer in terms of getting more subtle blends and soft blends acrylics is a bit more actually i i like an acrylics very much to traditional egg tempera from the 14th 15th century because that dries extremely quickly and if you look at the old masters um I um, you can see that that they couldn't blend a lot of the colours together because the the undercolour had already dried, so they did really almost invisible cross hatching and linear blending. Um, absolutely fantastic to see if you ever get the chance to look up close at an old egg tempera master painting.
That's fine, Kerry Ann. Um, v, no, if you update Messenger and as soon as you log in, all your messages are there. And if you update Facebook, it's free if you need to update it. There's no cost at all to either of those things. Hopefully that answers. But Kevin and Nick are more techie than I am um, and they can they can tell you. Right, so what I want to do with the sun is I'm going to go in and I'm dipping my little finger into the... Um, white acrylic and I'm just going to do a little circular swirl around and we've got a sun we can <laughs> Have you, have, you, have you stuck your finger in it, Rosemary? It's all right. So for people on Facebook, we also um, have a Discord channel um, where you can chat to me in um, real life vocally. Um, and um, I've got several people in my left ear. I, 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 I'm glad I don't have vision because I, I have no idea what's going on. Um, but it sounds like an interesting picture anyway. Right, if you're doing um, watercolours, Ali, um, you could, if your sky is wet um, still, if you wrap a two pence piece in the kitchen roll and dab it, it will lift out a perfect circle. If it isn't, you'll have to use a damp brush and lift it out um, and just put the brush in and dab it out that way. It takes a little bit longer, but um, it shouldn't stain the paper and you should be all right. It's lovely to have all of you with us. Uh, yeah. I've... I... The, 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 it's white with your little finger. You dip your little finger in the white and then swirl it on the paper. Um, use your hand a little, use your finger a little flatter. You could just paint it with a brush, but it's more fun with your little finger. Hello, Matthew. That's my nephew joined. Welcome. Nice to see you. Well, see your name digitally, obviously. It's social distancing. Um, okay, how are we doing? We're only half an hour in. This is cool. Don't stress about it. It's just a bit of paint, isn't it? Well, yes, it might be a lot of paint depending on who's painting it. Um, right. See, so, so you can see my sky is totally dry now and so is the mix on my palette. So there is a need to sort of work fairly quickly with skies. Anyway, I... I always like a sky to be completed in five minutes, even if I'm working in watercolours. Whatever medium. It's nice to have um, a quick sky, because it's more random that way, because sometimes the longer you work on a sky, particularly with clouds, the less random they look, and then you, you, you look away, and when you look back, every single cloud is the same shape, the same length, the same height. So the quicker you do something, it forces you to be more random because you can't think about it. Overthinking about your painting is the worst thing you could do. That and just adding. Um, my students will know in the classroom, I have a poster of a snake and that snake is called the Just Adder. Latin, crappius artius, and he likes to eat overworked paintings. Um, and he only comes out when you hear him be called and when you say I'll just add her that's when you know he's about and he'll come and eat your work so don't say I'll just add her when you hear yourself say I'll just add her stop working uh, put it away come back a couple of hours later a couple of days later and you'll see a difference um, and it always looks better so I'm using um, I've clicked clean your brushes it's acrylics be good clean your brushes don't leave them standing in your water 
don't leave them caked in paint because you'll lose it. Acrylics are made of plastic. So it's the same pigment as you'll find in watercolours and oils. But, well, there's some very vigorous cleaning going on in my left ear. Um, there's, um, it's with an acrylic binder. So that acrylic binder makes it more plastic. Morning, D. how are you? Thanks for joining. Um, right, so I'm going with my round brush, always give it a, a little bit of a wet, and then I'm going in with some ultramarine and cadmium red to make a purple, a dark purple, a tiny bit of white, because I don't want it that dark, but I do need it darker than the sky. Now this is more blue than red this time, and this is for the dark side of the mountain. Let's give it a bit of a wiggle down there. Ooh. I've got a stray bit on my brush, so I've got an extra hill. <laughs> now, when you're shading, you can never really fully get rid of all of your brush strokes. So don't bother trying. Just add, I'm going to add a little bit more white down to the lower part of the mountain here. Um, but if you can stroke your paint in the angle that you want it to go in the direction so for this mountain this bit of purple I want it to slope down diagonally towards the left are you painting along Kevin this morning as well in Maryland uh, what time is it it's two uh, nine o'clock in the morning no this is really early Kevin is it I don't know I'm rubbish with time zones Basically, what time is it, Kevin? Where you are. And if you want another one of these live classes, do say so in the comments after afterwards, and I'll look at doing another one. Obviously, um, if you'd like to uh, put a tip in my hat, um, then that's more likely to persuade me to do some more, to be honest, because as much as I love my job, it is a job and I want to be able to stay open when when this is all open so even um, 6 30 a.m. is that wow um, so even if you donate a pound that's a couple of tins of baked beans that is for me um, but it well I, I find eating is useful um, but also I have uh, two members of staff that work with me in the shop and they can't work, so I'm trying to make sure that I earn enough money to pay them as well while all of this is going on until the government's uh, funding steps in. So it does help. Now, what I'm going to do is, for the lighter side, it is snowy, but I am going to add, uh, make it a pale, a paler purple by adding white. And then we'll add some actual white on this in a bit. Oh yes. Lovely and mountainous. I am obviously self-isolating alone, which is why I'm a little stir-crazy. I'm drinking coffee out of my Ginger Ninja mug. Uh, if you've never seen me, because most people will never have seen me, um, I'm a redhead and my sister got me this um, last Christmas, I think, um, because I'm a ginger ninja. Well, actually, I'm more of a ginger winger, but I'm sure she couldn't find a mug that suited me. But a ginger ninja is fine with me. Right, so how are we doing? If you're in, yeah, all right. Ah, oh, what are you painting in then, Kevin? Are you still waiting for your stuff to be moved over? This year's been a, a, a real journey for you, hasn't it, in, in, in many ways? For you too? Right. 6.30 in the morning in Maryland. I wasn't, well, one of my alarms went off then.
Oh, I'm thrilled that you're all joining me. It's um, it is lovely to have your company. Um, it's this Saturday because it's the first Saturday in April. Um, it's normally a demonstration day, a forty-five minute demonstration. However, I thought you know what, I might as well do a full-on paint-along class for you all, um, because why not? And it all you all seem to enjoy it last week. And I know many of you will um, will either watch now or what dip in and dip out and then watch it later on when it's a full video. Last Saturday's, I haven't looked at it recently, but when I when I did last look, it had over 2,200 views, which is absolutely incredible um, for, you know, a little beardy bloke doing it from his dining room um, while he's waiting for his shop to reopen. Um, I'll tell you the classes that we've got coming in next, this next week. Um, the online classes, the £5 classes. Um, tomorrow, no, not tomorrow. Monday morning is um, uh, fungi and mushrooms in water-soluble pen. Monday evening is a dragonfly in watercolours. Tuesday afternoon is uh, an acrylic painting of Broadway Tower. Wednesday afternoon is um Festiniog steam train now that sounds more uh daunting than it is because it's more about the landscape with the train in it um rather than a full-blown um train picture then thursday morning is a oh, cornish tin mine in acrylics that'll be quite fun and thursday afternoon is the um dragonfly a repeat of um Monday evening and Friday afternoon is watercolours and it's um, a walk in the woods. It's a beautiful sunlit evening woodland walk in watercolours. And then on Saturday morning is a uh, mono weight script calligraphy class. And um, you can do that even with a biro because it's a lettering style that's quite nice to learn. Um, so all of those clouds, uh, all those clouds. All of those lessons are coming up this week online through Facebook and they're just £5 each. You can pay either by bank transfer or through PayPal. Um, and your company is always um, really, I'm always really pleased to see you and have you joining me. So, yes, I can, I'm can. just trying to read comments. I've got my glasses on today because I can actually read the screen. That's, it helps. Okay, so hopefully that's dried a little bit. So I'm going to go in with some neat white with only a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit and um, drag it over the, the lighter purple side on the, so I've got hair on that. The, going on the, towards the right hand side. Leave some of the darker purple, the, the, the purple in there that we've put on because that makes it a little bit more interesting. Don't cover it fully. You might find that it will skim across. Now, if you're doing this in watercolour, if you've got a white watercolour in your set, you can do it with that. Um, there are a few ways you can you can do it, or you can lift it out, because we don't want it too punchy. Um, And this is just in the distance. From a distance. Da, 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 da. If you want the um the white side of the mountain to, to show up a little bit, you could. And I'm always a little bit reluctant to do this, but I'll show you just in case um, that you feel, oh no. Um, you could very lightly with the purple, the darker purple, just give it a little bit of an outline so it stands out from the sky. I might put in just a few little darker lines while I've got that. 
on here because I did add a bit of white to it, didn't I? This is. Just to get a little bit of difference and interest in the picture. As I say, this is very incidental, but the more layers we can get, if you remember from last week, I was talking about depth in the landscape, wasn't I? And we said you need at least three layers of land. And I've kind of made sure we've got one, two, three, four layers here today, which will hopefully be good for us. We'll do the, the sort of trees next. Then we'll do the, it's a bank of trees on the, the right hand side. Then there's a bit of snowy land there. Then there's this snow, then there's the fir trees and we should be done by half past. Oh, well, there you go, Kevin. You've obviously been doing my lessons for so long, it's rubbing off on you, which is good. How are we doing on Discord, all right? Good. You're having fun? Well, you know, sometimes it is a little bit of a stress. It's like, um, I... I I've been teaching now, I think I've got to be coming up for 25 years. Got to be 25 years. Obviously, I started when I was two. And um, I still get nervous when I do, especially live feeds. I get nervous for every class I do with new students, even if it's a class that I've been teaching for a long time or a, a weekly class. Every time I get a new student, I get really nervous. And when I do a live like this, I do get really nervous. So even though it's a relaxing hobby, um, it's a little bit scary sometimes because, you know, most artists are by nature more of an introvert. And my students won't believe it, but I am actually a massive introvert. Um, but obviously when you're painting and when you're teaching, it's more of a performance art as well. So... Um, yeah, I like nothing more just to shut the door and hide away. But my job dictates that I can't do that. So it's quite good, actually, to to um, to keep me going. Right, so we want to do ooh, a sort of sludgy colour for these trees. And I'm going to use a small round brush. Um, one with a point is really good because we're going to use that point to create the trees. There's 45 of you. Welcome along if you've just joined us. Thank you for joining today. It's lovely to have your company. Right, so I'm mixing a purple with the blue. Well, I'm only going to save the blue and the red because we've only got blue and red, haven't we? There's only one of each. But this time I'm going to shove a bit of yellow in there. There's your technical term. So it, it, it'll go a, a bit of a grey colour, a brownie grey. And then I'm going to use the point of the brush. Look, look at that. Oh, I've lost my picture. Oh. There we go. So I've used the blue, red and yellow. And I'm just pointing it up. The paint is fairly fluid, but not runny like ink. Ooh, let's, I'm going to stick a big one here. Oh, it's a bit big. <laughs> oh, God. Blimey. I do like to have some of these trees showing that they're all different trees. But just using the point of your brush facing upwards makes makes life so much easier. It really does. And then I'm just going to fill, fill it in. I might add a bit of white towards the bottom to make it feel... A little bit misty. I get misty. I hope, um, oh yeah, Jan, you're right. Um, Sue, colours are blue, red, and a bit of yellow. So make your purple, then add a bit of yellow, and it will go um, more of a sludgy grey, browny green. But um, it's always good. A lot of my brushes in acrylics get ruined very quickly. Um, but I do keep them. I'm just going to stap with a bit of white in there to make it feel a little bit mistier. Um, 
but um, it it always helps if you've got at least one round brush with a good point on, because it um, it's needed for stuff like this. Oh yes, we've got a bit of low lying mist now, but I do hope you're all keeping safe and well um, during this horrible time. But also maybe making the most of it. I've I've actually. In, in in real life, because at the moment this doesn't feel like real life, does it, what, what we're all going through. In real life, I'm usually working around about 50 to 72 hours a week at the shop, um, teaching or visiting varying art groups. And I've not actually had more than three days in a row away from the shop in the 10 years we've been open. Um, so I've, I'm, I'm actually quite enjoying being at home. I'm, I, I actually emptied the crumbs out of the toaster the other day for the first time in goodness knows how long, which is quite mortifying. Um, but it's just so nice to, you know, you, you spend all your time working to earn money to live in a house that you can't spend time in because you're spending all your time working. So it's actually quite refreshing. Um, looking for the positives, I've planted some lettuce and I've planted my potatoes and a few, um, a few veg. Um, I'm really enjoying the the time away um, from from the shop, and I'm eating. Um, I've had some nice um, nice snacks. I I do because uh, I'm self employed. I always put extra bits of uh, tins and things aside every time I do a, a weekly shop. So I've got I've got a pantry full. So it's it's quite nice. You've got to look for the positives in these sort of situations. And also the big positive is that I probably wouldn't have done this class. And um, been with all of you this morning, joining me. Um, so what a wonderful positive that is. You're all um, joining with me and painting along. Or just watching and listening to my ramblings. Um, just because we're all together. So um, we can create while we isolate, which is what it's all about today. Right, I've got to move on because it's quarter to 12. So we've got 45 minutes now. Um, to do this and we can do it how is it going are you enjoying it is it looking nice is it a mess if it's a mess we'll just make the fir trees bigger so they fill the whole of the page <laughs> so it's just like one close-up of a fir tree maybe um right so what i want to do is oh, i might as well use this round brush i mix um a bit of purple up again with some white make a pale purple and I'm gonna cover this little triangle I'm gonna make that triangle a little bit longer because I feel sorry for it because I it was an accidental triangle it's nice having a, a nice limited palette. Good, carry on. So uh, you're using gouache, am I right today? I always, I never like the way I say gouache. It always sounds quite aggressive, gouache. Um, but I don't know how to say it nicely. You can say watercolour nicely and oil. Watercolour, oil, acrylics, gouache. It's, um, I don't know. It's um, it's the black country accent, isn't it? Because goo actually means go where I'm from. So it sounds like I'm saying go, Ashley, gouache, gouache. Um, you're getting watercolour. Oh, lovely. Can't wait to see. I lo Do you know what I'm really loving, especially with all these online classes? Um, our, our little classroom at the shop can only fit really, really eight people um, in at any one time. Um, and probably once we or get allowed back to some normality. I probably won't even be allowed to have eight in for a while while we still practice social distancing. Um, but what's lovely with these online classes, um, hey, good, I'm glad. Um, I've got 42 of you here now, and I definitely wouldn't be able to fit all of you into that classroom, even if you're all standing. Um, so it's so wonderful that I can have more of you joining in from all over the world, but also those of you that are uh, brave enough to, to share what you've created um, during these online classes are so wonderful to see the variation and just how much talent and skill we've got all over the place. So really, thank you for doing that. Hello, Rosemary. 
purple and white, same as your sky. So it's blue, red and white, pale purple. Yeah. Um, now, the next bit I'm going to do, if you're doing it in watercolours, don't do it. Is If you're doing it in acrylics, do it. If you're doing it in oils, do it. If you're doing it in watercolours, don't do it. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm using a smaller flat brush and I'm mixing a darker purple with the blue and the red. There's still going to be an element of white in there um, and it's going to be more to the blue tone. I always squeeze far more paint out. I always think I'm going to use a lot more than I am. Um, now, this is where it, you could be a bit scared. Um, if Actually, watercolourists do use this colour, mix this colour, but what I'm going to be doing is painting the whole um, foreground purple. Now, if you're doing this in watercolour, um, do this dry brush sparingly. But especially if you look at your photograph, there's a shadow of um, the trees cast. So you can paint that in with this purple and that'll give you an indication of where the trees can go. But um, acrylicers and oilers, you can do this with me. And yes, I am really doing this. <laughs> but I'm glad I've converted you to watercolour, Kerry, and that's, that's excellent. You do some beautiful paintings at the arty parties, you really do. Which colour? It's just a bluey purple, so just mix blue and red together, but more blue than red. It, I've, I've had to mix some more, and the, the next mixture I've made is totally not the same as the first mixture I made. It's only an undercolour. I'm going to paint over this in a bit. Yes. Very dark. And then we just let, yeah. So we've got no white paper or white surface. Oh, you flatter a carry on. You can definitely come back again. You'll make me blush. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. It could be black. Doesn't matter at all because it's an underpainting if you're working in acrylics. In watercolour, you're doing it as a dry brush. That's fine. What 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 the bonus of acrylics is is nothing actually matters ever with acrylics because as soon as it's dry, you can paint back over the top of it with a with a light colour or or what have you. So it really doesn't matter. Um, yes, Miriam, if you're doing this in watercolour, leave the bottom white and just skim a little bit of dry brush um, over the um, over the area, especially where the shadow of the trees are. No, we're not doing the shadow of the tree because you're doing it in acrylics, aren't you? So you're doing what I'm doing. It's only watercolourists that don't need to do this purple because they're going to be stuck and they won't get any snow if they do it all purple. You could use gouache over the top or white acrylic over the top, um, but I don't want you to have a, a massive panic. But acrylicers, we can just go for it and wallop this colour on. That's all right. Hopefully, hopefully by half past 12, it'll look like a seven-year-old rather than a three. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just winding the people up in my left ear. They can take it, I know, because they absolutely give it most of the time. So we just need to let that dry. So, yeah, if, if you do 
Um, if you have enjoyed this morning, um, or are enjoying this morning, I haven't finished yet. I could just say that's it and close, and then just leave you all to it. Um, I'm not that cruel. If you have enjoyed it and you would like to bung me a, a pound or something, because in terms of a a tip in my hat, um, the link is there. There is a link within the um event itself. Um. If you don't, if you haven't got the money and you can't, I fully understand. I know what it's like. So don't feel under pressure that you have to. Just enjoy the lesson for what it is. But if you can, I do appreciate it. Hello. Yeah, I, I tell you what, um, if you do get any acrylics on your clothes... Um, there are there are two options. Thank you, um, Louise. Uh, there are two options that you can do. Is um, one is get it off straight away with cold water. Warm water seems to dry the process up, uh, speed the drying process up. Or the other option is if you get any on your clothes, let it dry, and then it's a good practice in colour mixing. And then you mix up the same colour as you as your your top or your trousers or whatever you're wearing, and then you just paint over the top. It's absolutely fine. Right. So that's dry-ish drying i don't want to get the hair dryer on it today um so i will just imagine it's dried so i'm going to go with my um little round brush and skim a little bit of white this is what i would call dry brush if you've got it sort of pale in watercolors and you've got the, the sort of purpley color just leave it at that it's going to look beautiful because this is like an evening scene or early morning, I can't, I don't know. But it looks like it was painted on a when uh, taken the photograph on a Wednesday. So, um, right about, I don't know. It is evening or morning, I'm not sure. So a little bit of a skim of white over there, making sure some of those purple um, colors come through. I'm gonna leave this foreground for a little minute. So your foreground purple does need to be dry because we're gonna be doing some fir trees. Happy little fir trees with their little friends. And there's seven trees, which is wonderful. It means that they are um, uh, an odd number, which works perfectly for, for painting. You always want things flowers trees or what have you in random odd numbers so i'm going to use my round brush and black it's time for the black and i'm going to make that black more inky so i'm adding water whirling my brush around in it so it goes more like ink and by twirling the brush between your finger and thumb it ensures that your brush retains its point. Um, if you want fluid paint and you want um, more of a point to your brush, you really need to roll your brush around. And so I'm just scooping my brush up, dolloping the water in, and this is the same for watercolory people as well. Um, in watercolours, if you have um, done the purple foreground, you can just use a bit of white pastel or white chalk afterwards instead. Right, so we've got... Oh, my clock's a minute late today in here. Um, a nice inky black. Now, where am I going to go? We've got one, two... I'm going to start here with the smaller tree, and I'm going to paint a line like that. A thin top there and then I'm going to move um, a little way I don't know about thumb width to paint another line don't hold your breath when you're doing this if you can try and breathe normally and then there's going to be another one there if these were bigger trees, I would probably use the fan brush, to be honest. How many is that? One, two, three, four. Let's go down slightly. Five. 
Ooh, that's a bit wonky. Then a slightly shorter one. Then I'm going to do a gap and another tall one. There. Now, as long as the tops are thin and pointy, that's fine. But you'll find that you'll need your paint nice and fluid for this. Yeah, I stick a bit more black in, if it's runny. It was 38, there's not as many of you joining me today. I wonder where you all are. Or maybe you're watching later, maybe you haven't got up, maybe you don't even know it's Saturday. Who knows what days it is. Right, so, have you, have you all done your lines, or some of your lines? Thin point, um, and then basically how we do these fir trees is we do little wiggles and flicks with a few gaps, get in a little bit wider. The further out we go, um, now these trees they look like Nordman spruces because they're facing upwards like that. Do leave some gaps because it always looks better. Always have the have the point of your brush. Um, move to a really thin brush if if this isn't working. Move to a rigger or a liner brush or something like that. Okay. It is to keep it separate, yeah, because once it gets on your brushes, if it's for watercolour, it might um, ruin the brush. Oh, okay. So this is going straight to the bottom. And then as we move along, we do exactly the same with all the other trees. And don't be frightened to let them overlap. That's all right. Big trees will work in this scene just as much as the smaller cluster of trees. So you'd expect nearer the base of each tree that they'll all be solid so you can't actually um, see anything really through them. And that will make it feel more natural. In fact, I might, because these three, these clusters are so close together, I might just concentrate on the top bits of each one. And then when I get to a point where they've all got to join together, just fill it all in black. Saves us all being too fiddly. You might want to be fiddly. That's fine if you do. You fiddle away.
try to bring each tree um, and make it unique so that the branches are all coming out at different places. Some are longer than others, some are got more of a gap maybe. But don't forget, we're painting a silhouette, but the tree still comes forward and backwards. Very similar to how we were painting that tree last week, which was the, the wintry tree, the deciduous tree. Um, you want it all very round. You've got branches coming forward, backwards to the side. Now this one, there's definitely more tree showing here because there's a gap. that in So I'm, I'm, I sort of squint at the tree and see if I need to bring certain branches further out just to make it work a little bit better. This would look lovely in pastels as well, actually. You could even do it on a purple or a blue paper background and that would look absolutely beautiful. So obviously don't forget we're doing this in an hour and a half. Most people probably would take a little bit longer um, to do this in real life. I probably would as well, to be honest. I do a little bit more fiddling and more intricacy. But it's nice to see what you can do in a limited time with a limited palette. Um, if you have suggestions, if you want another while we're on lockdown, um, obviously next Saturday I can't do because um, I'm teaching a calligraphy class um, but if there are other Saturdays that we're still in lockdown for and I can look at doing another free class if you've got a subject or a medium then do let me know and I will look into um, trying to do a class for you online. I'm nice like that, despite what the rumours say. Right. Hi, Joy. How are you feeling? I'm actually going to, while you might be fiddling with that, I'm going to do a few smaller ones just down here and here. Ooh. just to get the sense that we're sort of going downhill or you really do need runny runny paint for the little ones but it just gives a nice sense of depth and distance to a picture and it can cover up any bits that you don't really like. We've got 20 minutes, that's good.
Ja. Um, yeah, you might need to a shower. Right, so I'm going to let that dry. Still 38 of you here. Well done. Thank you for sticking with me. Keep shaking the screen. So we let that dry and all I'm going to add is white now. Now, um, if you're doing watercolours, you might find that you might want to keep the trees just black because they're in silhouette and that works really well. I'm only going to be putting a small amount of white on some of those. Um, with watercolour, you could do it in a gel pen or white gouache or white acrylic um, just on top, which will work beautifully. Um, and I'll show you that. I just want it to dry first, to be honest. And then we can look at it properly. But it's quite effective, isn't it, as a scene? Um, last week's watercolours was really um, effective with just a few layers and a few colours. And this time, exactly the same, um, but in a different medium, well, for me anyway. Um, but I would be interested to really see what you've created today. Um, Um, beginning is um, in acrylics this is this is white cadmium yellow cadmium red ultramarine and black now the black I might have to get the hairdryer on because time is um, time is fleeting madness takes its toll So I'm going to get the hairdryer on, so there's going to be a bit of a noise for a second. I do apologise, it will bleach out everything, but I need those trees to be dry. Okay. That'll do. Um, I'm not going to use a pure white, I'm going to dull it down a little bit um, because obviously it's evening or morning either or so to do that, I want to um, mix an, a slightly off white, which is more of a, a, a an icy blue than a white. I don't want to go for a yellow, even though it's a yellow sky. Obviously, we don't like to touch yellow snow. So I'm gonna go with my flat brush, my small flat brush, which is, as you can see, I was talking about keep what what acrylics can do to your to your brushes. Look at that. So that was a perfectly smooth flat brush that was like that. The end. Yes. 
Um, but what happens over time is even well, when you clean them well, the acrylics lodge into the, bra the bla base of the ferrule and slowly it opens the bristles out. So I never buy brush expensive brushes for my acrylics. Um, in fact, we sell these Pebio ones um, in the shop. Um, and we'll still have some in stock when all of this is over because obviously we're not open. Um, and it's five ninety five for eight different sizes of brush, flats and rounds, which is a really good, um, a really good price. So I'm going to go in with some white and a teensy weensy bit of blue. Oh, do you know what? Actually, I'll use some of this purple that I've got here. So it's not pure white. And what I want to do with that is just come along across the top of the snow. Now, I'm going to leave little bits of purple showing through. A shadow and also look at painting and leaving out where the tree shadows are to save me having to paint those in. papers or your paint under painting is quite textured it'll work nicely and I might use my round brush in a second just to um, put some of the little bits of highlights in the snow with this color just so it breaks up We might add a bit of white on this, I don't know, to be honest. Oh yeah, it's all about being brave. Let's mix up a little bit more of this. Hopefully you found today really useful, enjoyable and um, a good learning exercise. Or you've just found it quite relaxing to watch somebody else do some work. Hi Leanne, welcome. We're just finishing. But you can watch it back as soon as the demo finishes in the next five to ten minutes. <coughs> excuse me, you can watch the whole video again and it will stay on our page forever more. I'm just creating a little thicker line here and there so it feels like there's sort of texture and mounds in the snow where the light's hitting it. I do hope you're all well. It's worrying times out there. But we're thankful that we've all got our art and we can all join together in this way as a, com as a creative community all over the world. It's lovely. I really think it's amazing. Well, sometimes who needs your marbles, eh? I've never had any. Right, so if I then 
um, use this icy color a little bit more dilute. I'm just going to bring out a few little lines of snow. Now we know that this isn't white, but it will actually look white on the tree. So this is for the lower line. So as I say, you could do this beautifully with a gel pen. In fact, even with acrylics, you can do this with a gel pen. little dots and lines here and there especially sort of sort of on the branches that are coming towards you where they might be a little bit heavier with the snow especially on the lower down one because if you think about it the branches are bigger thicker sturdier and more able to take snow the lower down the tree is You do have to think like a tree. You might get a little bit of dust in here and there on some of the other upper branches, but if the wind knocks them, then the upper branches are the, usually the first to lose the snow. Now, I don't want to go too mad with this. I want to keep some darks because it's important to Otherwise, there's no point in painting them in. I might use just a little bit more of a brighter white just on the top there. Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it, V. So this is just a little bit of neat white I'm just throwing in randomly to help with the texture. And make it feel a little bit more three-dimensional where we know the, the light's sort of hit, hitting it. So what, what I think is really useful with acrylics is the fact that even if you're not happy with what it looks like now, you can fiddle a little bit um, when, when I've stopped filming and you can carry on creating a little bit more. I don't like the bottom of that tree. Let me just bring that out a little bit. So that feels like it's in front. There we go. That's better. Okay, so all really that's left for me to do on here is to sign this. I never, I always sign it in different places and I try, I, I, I often use red. If I've got red on my palette, I'll use red. Just because I can. Do what I like, my painting. And I will post this on the actual, um, oh good, I look forward to seeing all of them if you're doing this and you're going to paint later on or um, join in later, watch it live back. Um, so that's it really, a simple scene with what, one, two, three, four, five colours if you count black and white as a colour, um, a nice little snowy landscape. Um, so thank you so much again for joining me today. It's been really lovely to have your company. And if you do want me to do any more of these in the near future, um, do let me know, pop it in the comments below and, um, I'll look and see 
if if there are certain themes that crop up or, or mediums that crop up then i will do one with you so if you'd like to join our online classes please message us um <clears throat> dm us and we can give you more information we have got a pinned um post with what classes we do but then there is in our pictures section our photo section there's an album of all of the online classes for the next month uh to take you up to the end of april um for the classes that we're going to be doing on here um every nearly every day of the week we've got at least one class that you can join in and our online classes are in closed groups and they're exactly like this and they're just five pounds a session um to join in so thank you so much for joining me and i will see you all again soon stay safe keep well um and take care yes